Well, hey everybody, it's Steve at Thousand Year Home. Welcome aboard. I had to wait until way into the dark before the uh, temperature dropped below 100. It's uh, 97 right now, and uh, I don't know, it's 9 30, 10 o'clock at night. I've had a hugely successful week, I really have. Um, as you know, I got another uh, a rescue horse for Hank. I appreciate the family very much. It was so kind. Uh, I'm looking forward to training Blaze. If you've watched the videos, you see Blaze has some uh, emotional eating problems, like a, a teen goth girl. <laughs> so I'm going to have to work with him. And uh, you'll already see, uh, if I put the videos out, that I've already got them uh, calmed down and trained. It's taken me two days of focus to uh, get that horse where he's uh, not panic eating and not causing disruptions. And it's all about a calm voice, a good demeanor, and I'll get more into that. But uh, And then I've had a lot of other things to do. I moved a sawmill. I've uh, It's just going on and on. I, I need to change things from the... Uh, I need to change, and the dust is killing me. It's just killing me. If you hear my voice rattled or, you know, I'm touching my nose, it's not allergies. It's the darn dust is just fierce. So, um, but anyway, I have to, in October every year after um, a drought, that's when, and the soil can't accept the rain. When we get rains, we get flash flooding. That's how that works. And because the soil is hygroscopic when it's just dry and the water just runs right off of it. That's why I leave my gophers and I leave my armadillos and I leave my burrowing animals so that the soil has an avenue in which to inject uh, surface water into the ground and uh, give it a, don't kill your gophers, everybody. Uh, leave them gophers alone. I, I know they're a pain for the horses and the armadillos, leave them alone, especially if they're just digging in your hedgerows. That way, when the water meets a hedgerow, it'll find a hole and uh, you might be able to stop some erosion. And flash floods anyway but what won't work is my driveway is sunk a little bit through this uh summer and i need to get that up so you'll see me change from the house what you need to do uh but i, I, I always like to do a little bit of work uh i can't step away here i will wander into the house let me put you on just a second uh, sometimes I do this at two in the morning, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm definitely feeling a little peaked right now. So I think I'll just, once I'm done with this, I'll go ahead and just rest up for the rest of the evening. Uh, I've decided I'm going to work on attaching the roof ties and I'm going to go ahead and get the trim around that window and I might get that cut, uh, the uh, hardy plank. Uh, we drove three different places and two places didn't even know what Hardy Plank was. There was a kid, a younger guy in his 20s, uh, working it up. I said, yeah, where's all your Hardy Plank? Then another guy I had to say, uh, uh, he didn't know what, he, he, he took me the siding and I said, no, I need the Hardy Plank backer board. <laughs> Look at my little film girl staging the shot. Staging. Action! Stage! Oh. All right. So before I bought this property, before I laid out a single thing, I went and made these measurements in my mind. And I said, I want a piece that'll fit right in between those posts perfectly. But I still want to trim, you know, it didn't. So that's why this fits so well, everybody. It's not just chance. It is not chance and circumstance that that fit that good. It was meant. We're meant to be okay so the reason i'm doing hardy board there you want to hold that for mm -hmm. a second hardy board there is because um this window can be left open and the bathtub will be here and i'm all worried about water splashing out so that'll be my hardy plank the rest of it will be drywall and when i got the drywall they didn't have any um mold uh drywall but we saw that someday somewhere right in lagrange uh yes we saw the mold resistant finally somewhere mm -hmm. so we'll get that Oh, we also saw it, yeah. So that's the genius of a simple car cowboy with a simple cowboy hat. <laughs> that kind of logistics and long-term memory. Right from the start, I knew in the middle of this container, I'd put that. That's the beauty of building in C2. I don't have floor plans, do I? No, you kind of wrote some down. I do, I kind of. Everything, everything starts with a drawing. Everything starts with a drawing, and all the drawings are in the head. All right, thanks, thanks. Like, subscribe. I'll stick this in somewhere else. Bye. And he said, oh, you mean, you mean tile board? And he sent me to the shower thing for the fiber tile. <laughs> it's one place that I found 
this little piece of, uh, and that's the way it's been with this. Uh, I'm sure you're all feeling the same thing. And that's why people aren't building thousand year homes because they're just building whatever comes through the big box manufacturing process they're just using. I'm hunting around for these things. So I'm telling you, a contractor want to do this work. It's my house. It's my retirement home. So I'm taking my time. Everything I'm putting in here is designed to be a thousand years. So, uh, but let me see if I can at least get a little bit of work done tonight. I'll set up my camera and then I'll mix up a little video uh, to go to bed by and then I'll rest up. But I want to get that trimmed out and in. There will be no electric in there because that's where the bathtub's going to go and I don't want electric near, obviously, a shower. So let me get this all set up. If you've been watching for a little bit, you'll recognize that I cut these wet. <laughs> now look what I did to myself. <laughs> oh my gosh, how terrible. So uh, I think for the, the for the dry for that um, party plank, I think I'll put another couple of sports in there. Alright, I'm using stainless steel screws, again, to give a thousand year last to this. I'm uh, measuring, uh, just using the insulation that I'll be using just as a general guide. There'll be a couple of pieces there that I'll do different. And uh, I like it. That's how I'm going to do it. This is None of this is structural because the container's the structure. So these are just furring strips to allow me to screw in. Um, that fiber board when I get it done. Cement board, rather. It is pretty hot in here still. I'm still struggling with the heat. So doing it at night's helpful, but certainly it's not a cure-all.
too late, too tired, too hot. All of the above. So I'm messing up that corner. I'm going to stop before I mess it up too much. I struggled all night with measurements and doing and doodadding. And, uh, you know, I just don't want a big mess in the morning. I just want to do it right. So uh, this is Steve. I think it's important to, to note when, uh, if you're self building, when to quit and call it a night. Tonight's that night for me. Tomorrow's another day. All right. Like, subscribe, follow me along. Bye.